Now we're gonna go to our new series. Anong title ng series natin? Storytellers. You know, when we were preparing for this, and in fact, we're, we're quite excited with this series on storytellers because we realized that young people love storytelling. Young people love listening to stories, reading stories. In, pa- in fact, they love posting stories about what's happening in their life. Kahit nga story na kumakain ako, ipopost niya sa Facebook. Kumakain lang, relevant na yan. Or papunta na ang CR, popost pa rin niya sa Facebook. So lahat na lang, basta about their lives, they're gonna post it there. They're gonna show to the people that this is what they're doing at that specific time, a specific minute, specific hour. This is what I'm doing with my life. Because they want people to view it. They want people to know na, wow, ang dami na ginagawa nito. Lala, if you're traveling around, kahit feeling ko every minute na nagta-travel ka, alam mo eh. Now, going to the airport, boarding soon, five minutes to go. Boarding soon, two minutes to go. So parang lahat na lang ibo-post mo. And that's why marami tayong mga pictures here of phone na you're posting stuff, what's happening in your life. So we love storytelling. We love telling our stories. We love people. We love listening to the, the stories of other people as well. And before we continue, I want to show you some of those stories na alam kong most of us, we like these stories. So I'm going to mention the summary and you tell me kung kaninong story to, okay? So can you just flash that to the screen? For example, this guy, this person, he joined the military. He was rejected because he was small. And then he became part of an experimental project. And then he became a super soldier. So who's this person? Si Hulk. No, hindi si Hulk. Okay? Si Captain America. Ito. How about this guy? Ako hindi ko kilala tong next story nito, pero I had to research because I heard sikat na sikat tong person na to. An adolescent ninja who searches constantly for recognition and dreams of becoming the Hokage. Diyan pala nakuha yung Hokage, okay? <laughs> the leader of his village. Ngayon ka lang, solo, ngayon ko na nalaman. Nung nag-research ako, when I was preparing for this, dun pala yung Hokage. Sino to? Si Naruto Uzumaki. Mayroon pala siyang apelido. So may surname pala si Naruto. Okay. Ito, kilala ko tong guy na to. And I bet a lot of you fan din kayo na to. Ito yung story niya. Started out as a good guy. Became a bad guy. At the end, he went back to becoming a good guy. And the force is strong in him. Ano yung real name niya? Buzz Lightyear? <laughs> Anong real name niya? Anakin Skywalker, or in other name, uh, we call him the Darth Vader. So you know the story, right? If you have, a, if you don't know the story, ganun po yung nangyari. He was a good guy, became a bad guy, and then again good guy at the end, then namatay siya, and the force is strong in him. Okay. Oh, ito, ito hindi ko rin kilala tung girl na to, but I had to research also kasi sobrang popular niya. Promising collegiate female weightlifter. Alam <laughs> ka. She and her friends. Oh, the... <laughs> wala na. Okay. She and her friends on the female weightlifting team are not popular with the guys and they don't have boyfriends. Tapos, she picked up a handkerchief and met a handsome guy. Hindi alam ng mga guys, so sabi sino yan? Okay. Sino to? Siya, si King Bokjo, okay? So, I don't also know this girl. I just had the research. Sikat pala siya. Okay. Oh, ito naman. Let's let, get a little bit more serious. Ito mga fictional characters yung pinakita ko. Now, this, this person is, is not a fictional character. Became an NBA player after high school. 13 picked by the Charlotte Hornets but traded to the LA Lakers. And then he became a five-time NBA champion. I bet he's the best for me. He's the best NBA player. <laughs> Siya si Toby Bryan. Okay. I, thought, I don't think you know this person in next story. This guy, he failed in business. His sweetheart died. He, de- he was defeated for U.S. Senate twice. So he ran for U.S. Senate twice. Natalo siya. He was defeated as for U.S. Vice President. He ran as well. Hindi si Donald Trump. Okay? <laughs> si Donald Trump. <laughs> he became the president. And I bet for, in our opinion, he's one of the best presidents of the United States. Sino siya? Si Duterte. Hindi. Sino to? 
si Abraham. Yeah, Lincoln. Okay? So this is also a true story. We like stories of this kind, right? How oh, about this one? This is the last story. At age 26, he was penniless. He opened a candy business twice, but both failed. Okay, bumagsak yung candy business niya. The third time, his candy business became successful. He earned around $1 million because he sold the company. And after he sold the company, he ventured into chocolates. So mahirap siya before, but he worked really hard. And he has now the biggest chocolate company in the entire world. Sino siya? Goya. No, hindi. <laughs> Ang name niya is Milton Hershey. And so that's his story. Okay, so... We love stories like this, right? That's why when I was selling those stories, alam niyo na kagat eh. Because sometimes it's relatable. Um, you can relate with what's happening, with whether it's a fictional story or it's a real story, we can relate with what's happening. And also, it gives us a glimpse of hope. Na baka mangyari sa akin yung fictional life na yon. Baka what happened to Kim Bok Ju mangyari sa akin, masagasaan ako ng bike. Mahulog yung panyo, I'll get the panyo, I'll get the guy by dream. So something like that, right? So we can, kin- nagpakwento lang ako, hindi ako nanonood. Okay, so, so baka ganon, it's, we, we, we're kind of getting associated with these people. Or even stories like Milton Hershey. Now, I, I came from a broken family. I came from a ca- pa- family now we're not that well off. But somehow, I really studied hard. I persevered and eventually, I became a big time. So we like those things. It's quite hopeful. But here's what I know that you like better. Because here's the thing. What kind of life story are you writing? Because this series on storytellers will focus on the story that you're writing. Because whether you like it or not, we are writing our story. And for me, I, it's more important, and listen to me here, uh, to, for you and I to be more concerned with the story that we are writing. Because we write the story of life. Natin eh. So what is that story? At the end of our life, or pag medyo wala na tayo sa mundong ito, and someone would summarize our story, what's gonna be that story? Is it gonna be amazing? It's gonna be, is it gonna be excellent? Because here's the truth. Let's, let's post that here. Here's the truth. Some of our, some of my decisions now will either what? Make or break me. Some of my decisions now, some of your decisions now will either, either make or break me, my future, or my entire life. Why is it some? Because the other decisions, wala namang, wala namang big bearing sa life. For example, kakain ba McDonald's or Jollibee? Wala namang future implication niya pag nag-McDo ako, unless nandun yung God's best more, whatever. So, but regardless, wala, wala namang, some decisions are just nothing, okay? It's just... Normal lang. Hindi naman wala naman big implication. But some decisions will either make or break my life. And that's why we like this series. Because we all make decisions. But the question is, what kind of decisions are you making in your life? You are making decisions with the type of friends that you hang out with, with uh, your career path in life with your love life, with your responsibilities, with the things that you do every year, every month, every week, every day, we make sometimes major decisions that if we don't know how to make major decisions, it has a big impact in our life. Because my personal desire, the full-time team of Elevate, we don't want na at the end of your life, pangit yung story in life mo. We want your life to be as excellent as possible the way God created it. That's why if there's one theme in this entire series, this is the theme that we want you to learn. We want you to make excellent decisions. Can you say that with me? One, two, three, go. Make excellent decisions. So from week one up to week four, this is the entire, entire theme. We want everyone to learn how to make excellent decisions. Can you tell your seatmate, make excellent decisions? All right, so how do we do that? So we're going to look at four stories in the Bible, that's what we do here in Elevate. If you are our guest or this is your first time here, we look at some stories. We learn from the principles. We're going to look at four kings, okay? We're going to look at the stories of four different kings that God has appointed. Some of those kings are not that good. Some are quite good. But we are going to learn from them. What are the good things that they've done? What are the not-so-good things they have done? And what are those things that we shouldn't emulate or apply in our lives? Because here's the thing, they also made decisions, 
And some of those decisions had major repercussions sa future nila. And we don't want that to happen in your life. We want everybody here to make excellent decisions. What is, again, the theme of this entire series? Make excellent decisions. So if you learn this, I want you to tell your friends, those who are not here, your D group mates na wala dito, kasi we are making major decisions every now and then in our lives. Kung mali yan, sayang yung path ng life mo and we don't want to, you to waste your life. Okay, so today we're gonna look at this story. Uh, you are quite familiar with this guy. Um, he was one of the, I think, the, the richest king ever lived. Okay, there's a clue already. So we're gonna look at this story and we're gonna learn from him how he made decisions. Because this week one, we're gonna look at one thing to help us make excellent decisions. So let's look at our passage for this Afternoon. If you have your Bibles, we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 3. So let's look at verse 5. Let's read that together. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared. There's the guy. What's the name? Solomon. So we're going to look at Solomon, King Solomon, during the night in a dream. And God said, look at this, okay? Kung nanaginip ka and si God sinabi to, anong sasabi mo sa kanya? Tingnan mo naman ito, anong sabi ni God? Ask for whatever you want me to. Kahit ano. Parang genie. Three wishes. One wish lang pala dito. Ask for whatever you want me. Can you tell your seatmate, ano yung sabi mo kay God kung inas ni God to? Background here, for those who doesn't know, si Solomon was the son of the mighty King David. Okay? So King David was the one who unified the Israelites. So he became a powerful king. And after him, he passed on his leadership to King Solomon, his son. And then, it was a good passing on. Eventually, the, all the people supported King Solomon. Because King David was a very good king. He was the man after God's own heart. That was the description. So when the king, kingdom was passed on him, God revealed himself to him. And God said, okay, what do you want me to do for you? Meaning to say, I am here for you, Solomon. I will support you. Imagine that. Tinan mo sinabi ni Solomon. Tinan mo sinabi niya, Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Now, guess how old was Solomon during that time? Little child. Eh? Five. No, I'm just kidding. Hindi siya five, hindi siya seven. The description was little child, but some scholars would say he was around 20 years old. But it's quite, hindi siya little, of course. Hindi siya child. But the point is this. He was quite young for the position. Because normally, you become a king when you're 35, 40, maybe 45, 50, but a 20-year-old king, na yung kingdom during that time was so popular, a lot of people know King David was one of the most popular and strongest kings of all time, and richest kings of all time. So kilala na si David, and now napasa kay Solomon, at 20 years old siya, and laki ng expectations. How are you going to lead this powerful nation? Para silang United States before. Napasa ni Donald Trump kay Duterte or whatever. So, pinasa niya. Oh, how are you gonna lead? Hindi naman niya anak niya or something. So, just imagine. Napasa niya kay Ivanka Trump. Or, tama ba yun? Yung ba yung anak niya? I don't know. So, basta yung daughter niya. Pinasa niya. So, this is what happens. So, and then you pressure. And then, your servant is here among the people you have chosen. A great people. Two numerous to count or number. So, there, it's a big nation. It's very popular. Very rich. And look at what he requested from the Lord. So, let's read this together. Give your... Servant, a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong for who is able to govern this great people of yours. Grave, ganda na prayer. In other words, Solomon was asking God, God, please give me wisdom. Hindi ko kaya to. You know, one of the ways to make excellent decisions is to ask God for wisdom. You see, the problem is sometimes when we make decisions, we base it on our feelings rather than on wisdom. And most of the times, our feelings will be wrong. Sometimes they are right, but unevaluated feelings most of the time will be wrong. Pansin niyo, most of the times you got hurt, anong ginamit niyo? Yung mind or yung heart? Huwag na tayo magsalita dito. Okay? So, get you na sinasabi ko, right? So, most of the times you got hurt was because you used most your heart rather than your mind. Kaya nga, pag nasaktan ka, ano sabi ng friends mo? Hindi ka ba nag-iisip? Ah, di ba? Bakit? Hindi ba na-analyze yun? Hindi mo ba na-figured out? All of those things, figured out, analyzed, hindi ka ba nag It's all in the mind. Be wise. Alam mo, na-realize ko kanina when we were having small group in, our, in, our, in my discipleship group, I was telling them, you know why God created 
both mind and the heart, I realized the reason why God created the mind is because the mind is the only part of our body that can manage our heart. Have you ever realized that? Nothing in our bodies can manage our heart. Hindi kaya ng kamay mo i-manage yung heart mo. Hindi kaya ng eyes, tingnan mo hindi. Hindi kaya ng mouth, kahit magsalita yan, hindi kaya yung tongue, yung teeth, kahit kagatin yung heart, patay ka or whatever. So, hindi kaya. Sino lang makakamanage ng heart? Or anong part of the body ang makakamanage ng heart? It's only the mind. Kaya nga, nagko-conflict yan eh. Most of the time, may sabihin yung heart, eh, ito kasi gusto ko. Ano sabihin ng mind? Mag-isip-isip ka. <laughs> Tingnan mo yan. Check mo yung Facebook niyan or whatever. So, di ba? May in-conflict eh. Laging in-conflict eh. So, that's why I like the prayer of Solomon here. Give me a discerning heart. So, so far, so good. Ang ganda ng prayer niya. And then what happened after that? The Lord, of course, the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. And look at this. Ha. If we make excellent decisions, tingnan mo yung price and yung blessing ni God sa life natin. Look at the blessings of God kay Solomon. So when he prayed that prayer, this is what the Lord said. God said to him, since you have asked for this, not for a long life, or usually ask mo, pag may genie, payamani mo na ako. Sige na, Lord. Give me $50 million, whatever, for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, being a righteous person, being honorable, dahil gustong gusto ko yung request mo, meaning to say, your heart is aligned to God's heart. Tinan mo yung sabi ni God. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart. And nun, anong klaseng leader ka? Let's read that together. There will... Never have been anyone as wise as you. And I believe there has been no one like King Solomon. Nor will there ever be. Imagine if ganyan na story ng life mo. Ang sarap, right? Now, when, you look at, when, you, when people look at your life, this is a life that made excellent choices and decisions. And look at what happened after that. Moreover, meron pa nangyari. Masaya na yung nangyari. I will give you what you have. Daya, no? Binigyan ka na ng wisdom. You're the wisest person in all over the world. And you also have wealth. You also have honor. So that in your lifetime, tinan description, you will have no equal among kings. And you know what? If we summarize his life, his wealth compared to all the kings in the world, walang kapantay ang wealth ni King Solomon. How do I know? Let's look at the story. So, after that was done, the promise was given. Okay, I'm going to give you a discerning heart. You will also be wise. You are not just going to be wise. You will have wealth. You will have honor. So what did he do? He became a wise person. He made decisions that impressed the people. Grabe, impressed na impressed yung mga tao. There was this one story in 1 Kings chapter 3. Meron doon, nag yung dalawang, mag- dalawang mothers. Kasi they were both pregnant. They gave birth. The other mother... Her child died. The other mother naman, her child lived. And then, ang ginawa ng other mother that yung child niya namatay, he got the other child of this mother na buhay yung anak niya. And he, she claimed that that's her child. So nag said, no, that's my child. No, that's my child. Eventually, it went to King Solomon. And King Solomon said, okay, can we just cut the baby in half? The other half sayo, dun sa mother of the dead child, and the other half sayo. Sabi nung mother na yung child niya lives, sabi niya, no, king, just give it to her. I want the baby to live. Sabi nung other mother na yung baby niya died, sabi niya, go, cut it in half. And then ang decision ni Solomon, this is the real mother. So give the baby to her. And everybody was so impressed. This king has wisdom. Imagine during that time, they don't know how to deal with that. But God gave her a uh, God gave King Solomon wisdom, and not just that. After God gave him wisdom, He also gave him wisdom to build the temple of the Lord. And tinangyare, this is the picture of the temple of the Lord. Let me show that. So it's a big temple, uh, full of gold, sobrang yaman niya, and it's for the Lord. So look at this. Huh? Nobody has built the temple for the Lord except King Solomon. Hindi si King David, hindi si King Saul, not the other kings. Only King Solomon was chosen by God to build the temple because God gave him a wise heart. So he started really well. Then after that, look at his response to the Lord. After building the temple, let's read yung response niya kay Lord. One, two, three, go. Lord, the God of Israel, and sabi niya? There is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below, you who keep your covenant of love with your servants, 
who continue wholeheartedly in your way. So far, so good. Ang ganda ng story. In fact, up to this point, ito ang summary ng story niya. He's wise, he's rich, he's honorable, he's popular, he is what? Parang lahat na lang nun, daya eh. May kilala ka bang ganyan? May katabi ka bang ganyan? Yes, Kuya Marty, may katabi na wise, honorable, popular, humble, pero hindi rich. <laughs> okay? Parang mahirap yata yung rich. May kilala ako, rich, yun lang. Okay? <laughs> pero to have all those qualities, wise ka na nga, mayaman ka pa, Honorable, meaning to say, well-respected by people. Pag nakita niya, ay, this guy, wala, wala akong masabing masama. Popular. May one million followers ka pa sa Facebook. Daya naman. Mag-post ka lang ng thank you at 1,000 likes ka agad. Thank you lang. Di ba may mga ganun tao, thank you, 1,000 likes. Ikaw, thank you, views. <laughs> ah, ah, why? So, right? So, we're living in, this is his summary of his life up to this point. And he was humble. How do we know? He acknowledged God. When the palace was built, when the temple was built, ano sabi niya? He worshipped the Lord. It was a massive celebration. They worshipped God. They sacrificed many animals for the Lord. And he said to God, Lord, even this temple cannot fit your glory. Look at his response to God. He was so humble. He always acknowledged the Lord. So far, so good. He was so popular that, look at this, huh? in 1 Kings chapter 10, this is what happened. When the queen of Sheba, that's around 4,000, yung place there, it's modern day Ethiopia, it's around 4,000 miles, uh, kilometers away from Israel, heard about the fame of Solomon. Imagine, narinig niya yung fame ni Solomon, and di lang yung fame ni Solomon, what did she hear about? She heard about the relationship of Solomon to the... Imagine the gospel about God the good news about the creator of the heavens and the earth was proclaimed all over the world because Solomon was wise. Look at that story. Now, because of your life, you're not just rich, you're not just wise, you're not just famous or popular, you're not just honorable or even humble, but because of your popularity, you share to the entire world about God. God is proclaimed because of your life. Now, can you look at your seatmate? Can you ask your seatmate, is God proclaimed because of my life? Pag nakikita ba ako ng mga friends ko, nakikita nila si Lord? Or gusto nilang pumunta kay Lord na lang? <laughs> right? Do you get that? This is what's happening here. When Queen of Sheba, pagan, doesn't believe in God. Maybe a different God yung pinuwina worship niya or gods ang winner worship nitong Queen of Sheba. When she heard about Solomon, this king is wiser than any kings in this world. And not just that, she has a relationship with Lord Yahweh, L-O-D-R-E-D, Yahweh. She came to test Solomon. Let me just test this guy to prove if this is real. So she tested Solomon. She went there, and then what did Solomon do? Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. Alam mo, kung may classmate ka na ganyan, yan ang gawin mong best friend. Nothing was too hard eh. Lahat, science, math, alam niya. PE yata, magaling siya. Home education, alam niya lahat. Okay, so... The, nothing was too hard to explain to her. When the queen, tinu mo description. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, so Solomon toured him around, her around. Oh, look at this. We have a basketball court. Oh, I don't know if there's a basketball court there. So we have this sports facility. We have this lounge here. We have a canteen. May potato corner. So Solomon palace he had built. The food on his table, the seating of his officials, even the seating of his officials. Grabe ka organized. Meaning to say, no nakita nung the Queen of Sheba, I haven't seen any kind of structure in, of a country like yours. Your kingdom is so organized, so established, that I am amazed. That's what the Queen is saying. The attending servants in their robes, so yung mga servants niya, honorable din, hindi yung parang kita mo na pwede mo nang api-apihin, honorable servants, his cupbearers, the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord. Ano yung na-feel ni, ni Queen Sheba? She was 
overwhelmed, amazed. This is an amazing king. She said to the king, the report I heard in my own country about your achievements and about your wisdom is true. But not just that. But I did not believe this until I came and saw with my own eyes. Let's read this together. One, two, three, go. Indeed, not even half was told me in wisdom and wealth. You have far exceeded the report I have heard. So far, so good. And look at the response to Queen of Sheba. You know why I appreciate the first part of the story of Solomon? And I'll explain later Well, first part. I know a lot of you know this already. Because look at the impact of the life of Solomon. Praise be to the Lord. See, Queen of Sheba to. Your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel, because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, He has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. Ganun ba masasabi ng mga friends mo sa'yo? Ano mo, grabe si Lord sa life mo ah. Parang gusto ko yung life mo. Yan ang sinasabi ni Queen of Sheba. I like your life. How come your Lord is so good that He's doing that in your life? And my God or gods, they're not helping me. That's what Queen of Sheba is saying. And then, okay, ito yung ginawa ni Queen of Sheba. Dahil sobrang na-appreciate niya si King Solomon. She gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantity of spices, precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in, in as those the Queen of Sheba gave to the king. How much is 120 talents of gold? 120 talents of gold is around 9,000 pounds of gold. In today's currency, it's around $118 million. Imagine isang gift. Ito, $118 million. million. Namitin mo. Okay, so. Pero hindi na niya kailangan yan. You know why he doesn't need that? Tingnan mo yung amount of gold he receives every year. The weight of the gold that Solomon received yearly was 666. There's no demonic about this, okay? So, bakit si Bill, nako, evil, 66, okay? So, Wala pa yung revelations ito, guys. This is Old Testament, so don't interpret it na this is bad or evil. It's just the amount. It's a fact. 666 yung ama- talents. So una, 120 talents. 118 million dollars na. Ito, guys, 666 yearly ang nare-receive ni Solomon. Si Solomon to, ah. Not the kingdom. Si Solomon lang. 666 is around 50,000 pounds of gold. That's around 659 million dollars yearly. Anong gagawin mo sa 659 million dollars yearly? Ako yung bibiling ko today. Bili kaya ako na church. Yeah, yeah man. Bili ko kaya CCF. Right? 659 million dollars yearly. So far, so good. King Solomon was greater in riches and wisdom. Then all the other kings, that's the summary, the story of his life, of all the earth. The whole world, you know what huh? Sought audience, thank you bro, so you're an honorable man, a wise. Whole world, the sign then, the whole world sought audience with God had put in his heart. In other words, if you look at this story, Solomon started excellently. He was able to make excellent decisions. So, so far, so good. We can end with the story here. We can close in prayer and say, thank you, Lord. I want to be like Solomon. I want to be like him, like a wise leader. I want to be an honorable leader like him. I want to be a leader like him that is humble. And if you be blessed mo ko to be popular, that's also good because I want you to make your name great. And if you be blessed mo ko gawin mong rich, then thank you, Lord, right? So I want to be like him. He sounds, it sounds like that his life is amazing. But I know a lot of us, we know the story that his life didn't end really well. So let's look at what happened. The whole world, so verse 24, the whole world sought audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom God had put in his heart. Verses after that, couple of verses, medyo may problem na tayo. Look at the next, uh, two verses after this. Verse 26, Solomon accumulated chariots, horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses, which, which he kept in the chariot cities and also with him in Jerusalem. Ano problema siyang kuya Marty? Let's go on. Let's read. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. Silver as common as stones. May nakita kang stone doon, ba? Parang ganun ng silver. Parang tinatapon lang dyan. Uy, silver. Ito na yan. Say na. Ganun ka common. A cedar as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the food. It sounds good. The nation is rich. People get stuff in their nation. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Kew. The royal merchants purchased from the Kew. 
uh, them from Q at the current price. So, ano problema dito? Few books after this one, Moses wrote something against this. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Let's read this together. The king, moreover, must not acquire what? Great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to Anong ginawa ni Solomon? Solomon's horses were imported from Oh. Di ba alam na niya yung sinabi ni Lord? How come he did this? And not just that. Sabi ni God, you are not to go back that way. And not just that, in the next chapter, um, chapter 11, this is what happened. King Solomon, basahin natin ito. Oh, guys, basahin nga natin ito. All the guys here, all the boys, let's read this together. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter. Isa, in other words, isa lang, guys. Hindi pwedeng madami. Madami. Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonites. Hittites, whatever termites, they were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israel, and sabi ni God, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts from their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. I love ko sila, Lord. Nakarinig na ba kayong ganun? I love ko eh. Yan. Yan ang script ni Solomon. I believe God was already revealing Himself to Solomon. Solomon, this is wrong. And I believe all the scribes and even the priests were telling him already, King Solomon, you see, in the, what Moses wrote, I don't care what Moses wrote. I built already a temple for the Lord. I don't know if that was his script, but maybe it's something, it sounded like that. Or maybe he was saying, King Solomon, sabi ng mga priests, ah, ang dami mo na pong wives, 700, 300, parang shadong madami. Pwedeng bawasan mo or... Pwede hindi dun sa mga kingdoms where God for, forbidden us to get there. Ang sabi ni King Solomon, I love ko naman. Yan. Making wise decisions. Making excellent decisions. Medyo nawala. Naging clouded na. As Solomon grew old, what's the consequence? Let's read this together. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart from other, other, after other gods and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord as the heart of David, his father, had been. And as a result of that, tinumi sabi ni Lord, the Lord said to Solomon, since this is your attitude, you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you. Basahin natin. I, let's read this together louder, one, two, three, go. I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your... You know what happened after this last part of his life? The, during his life, he had two struggles. Internal problem, external problem. He had an external op opponent. Another kingdom wanted to make, wage war against him. Aside from the external problem, Jeroboam rebelled, an Israelite, against him. Imagine, you're a rich kingdom, merong gustong kumaaway sa'yo, out, out sa, sa, uh, not from Israel, another kingdom, and internally my conflict, all because your heart was not aligned to God. Tingnan mo yung consequences. And you know what I'm learning here? So far, ang ganda ng story. But because of making non, not excellent decisions, it changed the course of his story. Let's read this together. There are many young Christians that start really well, but end up miserable. And my prayer is that this doesn't happen to you. How do you make excellent decisions? In our week one, I want you to remember this principle. Let's read this together. Run away from... What's the principle to make excellent decision? Week one, run away from distractions. Can you say that with me? Run away from... Can you tell that to your seatmate? One, three, go. Run away. Because you and I will have distractions whether you like it or not. Guys, madidistract talaga tayo. And look at the top dis distractions of young people nowadays. Let me give you the top five distractions of young people without specific order, okay? Top five distractions of young people. Number one, love for money. Number two, focus on image. Number three, unmanaged emotions. Number four, mishandled problems. And number five, wrong relationship. Let me explain, okay? Let me explain. Nakatingin ka kasi number five, okay? Let me explain. Let me explain. Money is not wrong, number one. Money is not wrong. 
but the love for money is wrong. That's what God is so clear with that. Money is not wrong, but the love for money is wrong. And the implication of love for money is what? I'm so preoccupied with money, na gusto ko yung material possession, you become materialistic. Gusto ko yung career path ko na yumaman talaga, I don't care if I step on people. There's no, you're not honorable. I don't care if I cheat my way, I just want money. So it has an impact in the way you live your life if you have love for money. What about focus on self-image? Top distractions. I don't care what God says about self-image. Gusto ko ma-please lahat ng friends ko dito sa class. Lahat ng friends ko sa Elevate. I want to have so many likes on Facebook. I'm gonna go to all the parties because I wanna be there so that I will be, you know, I, they will look at me and say, wow, okay to, game, to, game tong person na to lagi. I wanna have these friends. I wanna feel accepted. Self-image. Top distractions. Kaya nga, they're giving in to the kind of life of the world because for them, if I'm like the world, I will be accepted by a lot of people. Because if I'm not like the world, I'm not gonna be accepted by them. Ang boring ko sa class. Hindi ako kasama sa kanila eh. Focus on image. What about unmanaged emotion? Unmanaged emotion, this is yung mga desires, yung lust. For example, desire to, yung excitement. Some young people, their desire is just excitement. Pag walang nangyayaring exciting, for example, alam mo exciting things, partying there, going to lay Boracay, getting drunk, uh, having premarital sex, all the lust in the world, uh, you just want to have an exciting feeling. A lot of young people are like that. If I am not feeling that excitement, I don't have, I'm not managing the, my emotions properly, I'm just giving in. If God doesn't give yung exciting feeling na yon, then I'm gonna get it on my own. That's why it's a top distraction. This is the summary already. Of course, you can identify and enumerate. Ito yung mga specific distractions. But the, the summary of that is one, you have love for money. Either you have focus on self-image or your image. You have unmanaged emotions. Number four, ano yun? Mishandled what? For example, my problems kasi house. I don't feel the love in the house, so I'm just gonna get love outside. I hate my dad, I hate my mom, I'm just gonna go outside. I'm just, I'm not gonna stay here anymore. I'm so disappointed with my dad because we go to CCF, but it seems like he's not following Christ when he's here or when we're not in CCF. So why should I follow Christ? Hindi naman niya minumodel eh. Mishandled problems. Now I want you to listen to this story. I asked someone to share her testimony. She's one of our full-time workers. Uh, she's a campus missionary. She's in charge of our marketing department. And she has a wonderful life story of how God really transformed her life but she got distracted as well. There somehow God intervened. So let's all welcome Miss Nigi Reyes. I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I was a selfish and proud young girl who strived hard to gain the approval of others. I was arrogant and thought of myself as better than others just because I lived in a stable home, was quite popular in school, and had many ac academic achievements to boast. I thought these things would make me feel more complete and secure as a person, but despite all these, there was always a void in my heart that I couldn't seem to fill. However, in, in 2008, my self-conceived perfect world crumbled when our family found out that my dad was having an affair. I watched my family fall apart as my parents would fight in front of my sisters and I, to the point that we would wake up in the middle of the night because of all the yelling. My dad eventually had to move out of the house for some momentary peace. It crushed me to see that my once stable home turned into a broken one, and because of that, I grew very angry and bitter towards my dad. In order to preoccupy myself, I would spend every weekend partying and going out with my friends, and even spending time with my boyfriend that at that time I had. But no matter how hard I tried to distract myself, I would still come home to a broken family. Every time I could not stand the surmounting pressure at home and in school, I would take it out on my sisters and that took a large toll on our relationship. A year later, a family friend invited my parents to attend marriage counseling sessions in CCF Alabang as a last attempt to reconcile. Although they struggled to commit at first, I saw a gradual change in them, especially in my dad, who later on moved back into our home. I was so angry at my mom, that, who was so quick to forgive my dad, that I would often lash out at my dad and isolate him on birthdays, dinners, and parties. One day, my parents asked us to dress up and get ready to attend church. To my surprise, we ended up inside a big building rather than the regular church we attended in our old faith. 
Even more, my parents had already placed me and my sisters in a D group without our consent. There, for the first time, I heard about Jesus Christ. Not the statue we used to venerate, but the Jesus Christ who died on the cross for me, despite of my sin. About grace and forgiveness and about the reality of heaven and hell. But at that time, instead of accepting God's gift to me, I shrugged it off, thinking I don't need another church. Even then, I accompanied my parents every Sunday to CCF and attended the group meetings half-heartedly. But God never gave up on me despite the hardness of my heart. After my plans to study in a school far from home to escape my problems had failed, God had finally gotten my attention and I came to terms with how lost I was and how I desperately needed a savior in my life. By the grace of God, everything I heard from my first D group meeting finally clicked. I saw my sin and my hopelessness. I saw and felt the pain of relying on my own strength and of living for the wrong purpose and for the wrong goal. More importantly, I finally saw God's love for me on the cross. No matter how broken and terrible I had already become, He welcomed me with opened arms and offered me eternal life. I did not in any way deserve His love and grace, but He gave it anyway. That night, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I've never been the same since. I don't know where to begin as I look back at all that Christ has set right in my life. I let go of the things that I knew displeased God, including the worldly lifestyle I once had. And by God's grace, my heart began pursuing God's will for my life instead. God also began restoring my relationship with my family, and He even used me to share the gospel to my younger sister, who by God's grace also shared the gospel to my youngest sister. I then joined the worship ministry with my dad, and the Lord also used this opportunity to help me finally reconcile with Him. I also became actively involved in Elevate Alabang back in college, where I served in the music and events team. Eventually, I answered God's call to serve Him as a full-time campus missionary in 2014. God has graciously put in my heart the, ter the, the determination that in this one life I get to live on earth, it must be invested on the things that will make the greatest impact for eternity, and that is to see hundreds of students come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. By God's grace alone, I am now serving Him as marketing coordinator in Elevate, Maine, discipling a group of 11 D-group leaders, and living a life that is beyond what I had imagined for myself seven years ago. I am Nigerius, to God be all the glory. So imagine, you know what distractions can do in your life? Kung nasa right course ka na, distractions can move you away from that. And the consequences, of course, we don't see it kagad, but the consequences are great. What I like about Naiji's story was he, she was distracted before, but by God's grace, someone told her about Jesus. Of course, she had a hard time handling with those problems that they were experiencing in the family. And sometimes you, we blame our parents, what's happening at home, that's why I'm not okay with the Lord, because you're not okay with the Lord, because you're almost separated, or you're separated already, so we blame what's happening, what's going on, even that, that series, have you heard about a series, The 13 Reasons? You know, when I, when I heard about that series, and I, I heard about the summary, it seems like what they're blaming is the system, the school, I was getting bullied, nobody was listening to me. But here's the thing, even if you blame other people, you have a choice to make. If you're going to commit suicide all because of those petty reasons, you're wasting your life. Sayang yung life na create ni God. Kaya nga, look at the top distractions. Can either be love for money, can we flash that there? Focus on image, unmanaged emotion, mishandled problems. Hindi mo naman maiwasan yung problems. Every single person, whether Christian or not Christian, strong Christian or a carnal Christian, everybody will have problems. But God has given us mind to think so we can make excellent decisions. And part of that is to run away from these distractions. Now, the last one there is wrong relationships. Now, I'm not saying that it's just about boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Any kind of relationship. Because some of us, we are part of a group na alam mong they're not good role models for you. And instead of you helping them know Jesus, at the back of your head, you keep on explaining and arguing with God, Lord, I'm going to help them know you. And, but in reality, what's going on? You're running away from God because of what they're doing, how, they, how they're living their life. Now, I'm not saying you run away from them, you don't talk to them, but don't be like them. You have to be different. You run away. That's running away from distractions. You be different from them. If they get drunk every week, then don't get drunk. Don't even drink if... if possible. Don't drink at all. You are to be different. 
Because our decisions, they have so much consequences. Solutions that God offers. Because these are our desires. Eh? I want love for money, Lord. Tell me solution. Yeah. He might not make you rich, but you know what I tell you? You will have all that you need. That's the solution from God. He might not make you the richest man in the world, in your school, here in Elevate, but you will have all that you need. Focus on self-image. He might not make you the most popular person in school, but I tell you, you will become who you were created to be. Absolutely secure, clear image. This is who I am. This is my purpose in life. My direction ka. Kaysa yung focus ka on self-image. I want to be like that because everybody's like that. I want to dress like that because everybody's like that. I want to be like this so that this guy can like me because she, he likes this kind of girl. Or I want to be like that because if I'm like that, I, ha- I will have so many likes. I my Facebook page will be so popular. My Instagram will be so popular. It's all about image, image, image. That's why when you look at the mirror, you still feel insecure. There's no security. Kaya nga insecure, without security. But with God, you are completely secure. Alam mo, ang only solution with insecurity. Eh. You get your security from God. There's no other way. Kahit pa tumbling, tumbling ka pa, seminar, seminar ka pa about insecurity, how to handle your image, how to have a better self-image, it will never ever be solved if you don't get your security from the Lord. Solution, unmanaged emotions. He might not give you everything you desire, but you will be completely satisfied. I tell you, when you are with God, when God is the center in your life, ibang klase, yung, yung peace that surpasses all understandings, yung contentment that you don't understand, you don't have that much money, but you're content. You have so many problems in life, but somehow there's that peace that comes from the Lord. You'll be able to manage your emotions. Mishandled problems. He might not solve all your problems now, but I tell you, you will be problem-free in the future. Kaya nga may heaven eh. Walang problem dun, guys. Walang nga umiiyak dun eh. You'll be problem-free. And last but not the least, Wrong relationships. He might not give you the guy, girl, guy you think is best for you or the group that you think is best for you, but you will have the only relationship that can give you unconditional love and an abundant and eternal life. Would you trade yung mga distractions natin for the solutions that God is offering? I think it doesn't make sense. And I will use the coin term lagi ng mga tao when there's a love life problem. Mag-isip-isip ka naman. You just tell that your seatmate, mag-isip-isip ka. Hindi na may solution, guys. I-compare mo naman yan dun sa, sa mga distractions. Parang hello. It, it, it doesn't make sense talaga. It just boggles my mind how young people or other people, even older people, would choose the distractions over the solutions of the Lord. It's just crazy. Labo talaga. Naawa ako na natatawa, okay? Kasi, mag-isip, let's think. That's why God gave us my to think. Let's make excellent decisions. Let's run away from distractions. Last statement before I end. Don't let anything or anyone distract you from the amazing story that God has in store for you. Don't let anything, anyone distracts you. Maraming mga good offers sa world. Maraming mga friends who will approach you, this is a good thing. Look at my life. View my Facebook page. Look at what's happening in my Instagram. Look at all my followers. There will be good things, but it's not gonna be great. God has created you to have a great story, amazing story. You don't wanna miss that out. Tinamin you know promise to Jesus, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I'm going to end with this story. There's this guy, uh, it's a parable, it's not a true story, but there's this guy, he went to heaven after he died. He's a Christian, follower, follower of Jesus. So he went to heaven and God gave him the, his house. Diba? Sabi ni Jesus Christ, I prepared for you mansions. So he had his mansion. So inside the mansion, he went inside and Jesus was with him. So, of course, he embraced Jesus. Lord, I'm so excited. I finally saw you face to face. We're here. Uh, and then, sabi ni Jesus, this is your house. Oh, wow. So, he went inside. And he went to his, up the room, in bedroom niya doon. So, he went inside the room. And when he saw the room, ang ganda ng room. Wow, this is, and so Jesus said, I prepared that for you. But he noticed a specific portion in that room. May mga boxes. A lot of boxes. Na parang hindi nabuksan. So, sabi ng guy kay Jesus, Jesus, what are those boxes? So, I mean, you open it. You open it. 
So he opened the first box. There are a lot of boxes, but only a few he opened. So he opened the first box. So it was his life, high school. So something happened in that, kasi parang TV, no nakita niya, oh, this never happened to me. Parang yung nasa mind niya eh. And he was looking at Jesus, I never, I never experienced this. But he remembered that school was the same school he was attending when he was still on, on, on earth. That was the same friends. But somehow, that experience, it was a great experience. He never experienced that. So sabi ni Jesus, he opened another box. So he opened another box, and he saw parang TV again. College naman. And as notice niya, oh, this also never happened to me. What's this? It's so good. I, I, I wanted that kind of life, but how, it never happened to me. So sabi ni Jesus, he opened another box. So he opened another box, and in pangatlo. And this one naman, there was, there was the, him, it, it was him and another girl. He was married already when he was still on earth. Pero ibang girl. Na parang, kilala niyo yung girl na yun from college, I think from high school, from church, na crush na crush siya, gustong gusto niya. Pero hindi naging sila. Pero nakita niya doon sa box na yun, oh, ba't naging kami, Lord? Because eventually, he went to Jesus and said, Lord, what, what's that? Sabi ni Jesus, alam mo, those were supposed to be my gifts for you if you weren't distracted. That's why, run away from distractions. Sayang eh, guys. Sayang. I'm, I'm not saying na magkakaroon mga box dun sa heaven. Mariregret ka. Ay, yung pala dapat. Wala lang ganun dun. That's why it's not a true story. It's just a parable, okay? Hindi siya totoong story. Pero just looking at that principle, it has a point eh. Sayang. Sayang. Run away from distractions. That's how you can make excellent decisions. Can I pray for you guys? Can you all stand up, move forward here? We're going to sing some songs. I don't know how this message has cut across your heart, but come in. Come here. Move forward here. Once you're here, bow down your heads. Let's just focus on the Lord. Don't talk to your seatmate yet or to uh, the people that you're standing beside with. So I don't know how this message has spoken to you, but I pray that as we start this series, yung desire namin that you make excellent decisions, you will really do that. You have friends who are not here. You know that some of them are distracted. So bring them here next week. Bring your classmates, even those people who don't know Jesus, because we're all going to learn how to make excellent decisions. And the first part is we run away from distraction. Let's all pray. Bow down your heads. So I want to pray for two specific groups of people here tonight, this afternoon. First group of people I want to pray for, maybe for some of you, um, it sounds good, but somehow for some of you, you're not, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. That's why wala ka pa nito. That's why it's hard for you to run away from distraction. In fact, if I ask you the question seriously today, are you sure if you die today, you're going to heaven? Maybe for some of you, your answer is no, Kuya Marty, I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven. Pwede ba yon? Yes, pwede yon. That's why Jesus Christ said to the, a Pharisee that was talking to him, Sabi niya, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever, kahit sino ka, kahit gano kasama yung past mo, whoever you are, once you humble yourself and you believe in Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, promise niya He will give you eternal life. So that's the first step. If you want to ha- be able to make excellent decisions in your life, the best and the most important excellent decision you are to make is to receive Jesus in your heart. So first group of people, if you're that person with all heads bowed down, can you just raise your hand if you're that person? You want to receive Christ? Can you all bow down your heads? Can you just raise your hands? If you're that person, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. I see those hands. Anybody else? Nobody looking around. If you want to have eternal life, you want to be secure of your future. You want to make the best and most excellent decision in life. You want to receive Jesus. Again, final call. Anybody else? I want to pray for you. Lord, you see the hands of these young men and women. They're committing their lives to you right now. They want to receive you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. Speak to them, Lord. Assure them now with faith like a child, being humble, and receiving you, Jesus, in their hearts as their Lord and Savior, they are assured of eternal life. So if you're that person, can you pray this to Jesus silently? Just say to Jesus something like this, Jesus, I am a sinner. 
I need a Savior. I want to make the most important decision in my life today. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Change me. In Jesus' name. Now for all the other people here, you can put your hands down. I want to close in prayer and pray for everybody else. Lord, please help us. A lot of people here, they already have a relationship with you. Pero ang dali talagang madistract, Lord, here in this world. Please, God, help us not to follow the second part of Solomon's life. We want to finish well. We want to make right and excellent decision. And part of that is running away from distractions. Lord, please, give us the courage. Give us the strength and the power to say no. To flee from those good things. Sounds good, Lord, but they're not great. We want the great and amazing story you have for us, Lord Jesus. It may be hard, it may be tough, Lord, but we know you are with us. So please help us. And I pray that everybody else here will be excellent in the way they live their lives, will run away from distractions and follow you, our God, our loving King. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.